Hello my friends and welcome to The Simple Sober Life. I am Joshua and I help others make simple changes to create a life of awesome. Well, today officially marks my one year anniversary and I couldn't be more excited. It was a year ago today that I was walking into one of my probation officer's um, office to um, turn my, uh, not to turn myself in at that time, um, but to actually to do my monthly reporting. And Faith, Faith, are you gonna have to go back in? Hey. That's life. <laughs> anyway, my friends, yes, I was walking. There's nothing out there. Oh, it's a squirrel. Are you gonna let that squirrel sit there? Huh? You just gonna let it sit there? Look at this, right over here. Get out of here. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> Faith hates squirrels in her yard. Just thought I'd help her out. Let's try that again and taking it from the top. Hello my friends and welcome to The Simple Sober Life. I am Joshua and I help others make simple changes to create a life of awesome. Well, it is official. I have done it. I am officially one year sober and I couldn't be more excited. It was one year ago today that I was walking into one of my probation officer's office uh, to do my monthly reporting. And I was subsequently arrested for violation of probation on another, uh, in another county. Um, I knew, I going into the office, I kind of knew that um, was going to happen, but I, on the long bus ride to the uh, probation uh, officer's office, I kept praying, please, 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 please don't let their systems be connected. Please, when she pulls up that file, don't let her see that, you know, there is a warrant out for my arrest. Didn't happen that way. And looking back at it, it's probably one of the greatest things that has ever happened to me in my life because that actually forced me into sobriety to actually clear up my head. Um, it was definitely not by choice. Um, I It was over Memorial Day weekend. Um, I was arrested and I was taken to the DeKalb County uh, Jail in Georgia. And I had to sit there in a holding cell uh, for the next uh, three, three, four days. Um, because they weren't coming to get anyone on Memorial Day. Um, you know, I had to sit there and the conditions were horrendous. Um, you know, it was just a large block of, of cells. Um, and I'd been to jail before, so I knew what to expect, but this one was especially disgusting. There was absolutely no contact, no communication with any of the officers. So if you needed something, forget it. You're there and that's it. They pretty much put you into this cell block and forgot about you. Uh, they would deliver uh, meals uh, through a slot in this giant door and um, all the guys would have to line up along the wall and one by one take their trays and then go sit down. We had one television for, I think it was like 30 guys in there that was about this big and it was cracked halfway through, so only half of the picture showed up. 
There were no cards, there were no books, there were nothing in there. And I sat in there for three days, awaiting to be transported down to the county where my warrant was issued. And that was in um, Perry County, South Georgia. Some BFE place if you, if you you would skip over it going down 75 on your way to Florida. Like you wouldn't even notice it was there if it's that small. So I had to report, or I was eventually transported down there where I awaited, you know, a hearing. And the result of that hearing was 30 days in jail. Now, like I had said, um, I've unfortunately been in jail before. I didn't learn my lesson the first time, but this was the longest period of time that I was ever uh, sentenced to stay. And within that time, um, you know, I kind of kept to myself, even though I was in a work block, um, you know, uh, but I started writing my book. And I really started um, diving into, you know, the things and events that have happened in my life and really started to do a self-reflection of who I was and why I um, had gone down the path that I had chosen to. You know, when I was younger, um, you know, I was full of ambition, full of dream. There was absolutely nothing I couldn't do. And if you challenged me thus, I would accept that challenge and I would overcome. There was quite literally nothing I could do. And, you know, as I matured and grew up, I kind of started losing hope. I kind of started losing that ambition and that drive. And I, was, I really felt lost a lot of the time. Um, I didn't know what I was here on earth to do. I wasn't... Sorry, I got ants and stuff crawling on me. I wasn't really sure about, you know, what direction I needed to go. Um, not to sound arrogant or egotistical or anything, but everything that I've attempted to do, I've always been pretty good at. You know, I put in the work and um, I, I do what I need to do in order to accomplish a goal. And that kind of opened up my world to the point where I didn't know what to do, if that makes any sense. because. You know, I, I wanted to be an actor, so I went to LA and I started acting. I wanted to um, go to film school, so I went to film school and I really excelled there. I started my own business and I started excelling there. I worked in finance, I started working there. I started doing um, uh, fitness coaching and I started excelling there. And so, I, I, maybe this is, a, 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 I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm just uh, blabbing on here, but the point is, I felt lost because none of that really, really fulfilled me. And, um, and so a lot of times in order to fill that void, to fill that, um, yeah, you know, uh, what was missing in my life, I would drink. And, you know, I would drink to the point where I would just pass out. Um, and, you know, that was... A viable option for me because I was still able to go to work most of the time and um, I was able to drink and so I could escape my own reality my own loneliness my own desperation to find my lot in life and still earn income which eventually transferred just into you know supplying myself with alcohol um, after the 30 days I got out and um, you know I was uh, essentially homeless. Um, I, while in jail, um, I hadn't paid rent and so I was evicted. Um, and, you know, I didn't have a job anymore. Uh, right before going into jail, I was fired from my last serving job. And I had absolutely no prospects. I had, um, you know, no real place to call home. And I was quite literally at the bottom of the barrel and that was um, well after getting out of jail that was less than a year ago but it was a year ago today that the choice was 
kindly bestowed upon me that it was time to straighten up my life and actually become a benefit to this world. And so within the past year, I have, um, you know, flourished and really progressed um, physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, in relationships. And so I started uh, the Simple Sober Life to help others in sobriety accomplish the same thing. Um, you know, I really make it a point to help others in sobriety, you know, reach their goals and accomplish and, and dream bigger. Um, and that is, if that means, you know, growing your business, then awesome. If that means fulfilling the void that is inside because you don't have anything spiritual to believe in. If that means, you know, helping you repair and create new relationships. Um, if that means, you know, losing weight or becoming a healthier person, both physically and mentally, that's what I am devoting the Simple Sober Life to. And this has truly become my passion. Now, with, with that, I've also taken on, taken on some other endeavors to help um, finance the business. Um, you know, I, I'm currently working a full-time job, um, which is funding uh, a lot of the business uh, to help it keep growing. And I'm currently in school to become a software developer. Uh, software developer so that I can bring in more money to fund the business until it's able to stand on its own. And my ultimate goal is that the Simple Sober Life become profitable so that I can dedicate my entire attention to that. And that we, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be able to share my story and to inspire and help other people around the world um, you know, accomplish great feats in sobriety. Because this, I now understand that this is by far the greatest gift that I have ever received. And it's with this clear head and with this passion that I'm able to, um, um, well, find my lot in life. And, um, really do what I feel like I was meant to do, and that is to create a global, a global positive impact. And that's something that I was not able to do a year ago. And um, it feels pretty cool, <laughs> for lack of um, a better, um, a better uh, term. But anyway, my friends, I want to extend a true and uh, heart, uh, full-hearted gratitude to you all for helping me along this journey. And I hope in some way that I have helped you. I hope that um, you leave my, my page and my YouTube channel, my blog, um, inspired and motivated to follow your passions. Um, but anyway, enough of that. I've got work to do, my friends, because the day doesn't stop. Um, you know, I've been very productive today. I've written several pages on my book. Um, I've got uh, uh, social media posts scheduled. Um, gosh, what else? I don't know. I just feel productive. I feel energized, and I want to spread it to you. So let's keep this day moving. I've got a meal to prep for next week. Even though I'm off tomorrow, I want to do it today. I'm motivated to do it today, and so that's what I'm gonna do. So I don't have my car, it's in the shop right now. <laughs> and um, so I wasn't able to go to the grocery store, and I still need to meal prep for next week, and I'm doing that low carb challenge. So I had to rummage through the freezer. Um, I'd gone grocery shopping a couple of times, tossed things in the freezer and forgot it. So um, I'm basically in a scramble of um, you know what to meal prep. And I've been doing this low carb thing for quite a while, especially when it comes to doing the lunches and things like that. I always maintain the low carb mentality. Um, now when I'm not in a challenge, um, you know, I'll pig out on pizza and nachos and whatever for dinner, but at least I'm substituting my lunch with something healthier, something more low carb. So what I had in the freezer was some Italian sausage, and some bratwurst. 
and I also had some frozen veggies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stir fry the veggies and just kind of toss in the, um, the bratwurst and the sweet, uh, the, uh, what the heck is it, Italian sausage. I'll add some seasonings and whatever. I'm not really picky about it because it usually only takes me about 10 minutes to eat lunch. Um, so whatever, but it's what I got and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start out by giving these a little chop and then I'm just gonna toss them in the, um, in the pan to cook them up. Now this is a lot. Um, I only have four days next week, but um, I can use it for like dinners and, um, and uh, lunches uh, next weekend. So none of it will go to waste. And we'll just let that cook through. Now it's pretty much cooked through, I think. <laughs> so I'm gonna take some garlic. I just roughly chopped some garlic and I'm gonna sprinkle it in there. Add some flavor. I turned down my heat so it can continue cooking because I don't wanna mess with pork that is medium temperature. And I've got this um, stir fry mix that I'm gonna throw in there. Mm, smell my garlic. And some cauliflower. We'll give that a little toss. Nothing else, the colors are nice. And my sister has this famous Dave's rib rub. Um, we haven't had ribs yet, but it smells really good. And I think uh, just based on the smell, it might be a pretty good additive to this. It has um, garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, a um, bunch of stuff I can't pronounce, <laughs> mustard, dried bell pepper, dried tomatoes, uh, some orange peel. So it's got a good um, mixture of stuff that might combine all of this, but who knows? There's only one way to try it, right? Only one way to find out. Woo! We'll give that a generous toss, I guess. And we'll just kind of mix that in there. simmer for a while. All right, let's give this Frankenstein meal a little try.
Not terrible. Definitely glad I had that seasoning. That seasoning's really good. It'd be really good on chicken or something like that too. Hopefully the sausage is cooked all the way through. I guess we'll find out. It's a meal. <laughs> Went from sun shining to raining in like two seconds. <laughs> I love these little pop up showers in the afternoon. It so reminds me of Florida. Um, you know, it's sunny and hot and humid in the morning, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> It starts raining just like out of the blue with some thunder, a good old thunder roll, and then it goes away and is beautiful. I love that part. <laughs> but it's been a very productive afternoon after I got done um, uh, making uh, my weekly dinner. I went ahead, just threw together a salad and a little uh, wrap for lunch, and took a nap. <laughs> But it's coming up to uh, early after, late afternoon, so I've got to get some more work done. I've got to uh, edit this video and then jump on schooling. So, um, you know, always a busy day. Always a very productive and busy day, or at least try to be. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please make sure to comment down below. Also, like this video and subscribe. Until next time, my friends, cheers.